Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about live streaming your church service. And so here we have our head of our media department and this is Vaughn Williams and I'm Josie Brackett and let's get into it. All right, so a little bit of background about us here at Rest Tabernacle Church. And so for the last couple of years, we have been streaming our services just for internal. So for any of our members who can't be at church for that day, we've been uh, streaming the services on YouTube and allowing them to have the link. And we've also been live streaming, so putting it up on Facebook or YouTube, letting those go public for our big services, or so our convocations, our youth services, our women or men services. Those are live streamed for everybody um, to see. But since the pandemic happened in early March, we've actually been live streaming all of our services. All of our Sunday services have been live streamed for anybody to view. Um, so we're just gonna go a little bit into our setup and what we do and also to help you as a small church is also looking to uh, Whether you've already on live stream or whether you're trying to just get into it Or even if just to upgrade what you have just to get a better overall visual for those who may be watching We're here just to help you out a little bit All right, Vaughn, so what is a basic setup that a church or maybe a small church on a smaller budget can you do? to get themselves up and running, whether they already have a, a stream or a camera or something going, or whether they're looking to start fresh. What are just some basic things that they can use to get a stream going for their church? So first you would need to, like the absolute starting fresh basic, you need to have a good internet connection. So you would need to be sure, and with, with internet connection, make sure you're paying attention to the upload speed, not just the download speed. Um, we'll get into that more of that later, but so you have to have the internet, you have to have the interface that will connect everything together, and then you need the program that will push it out onto the stream. Okay, but what are like some of the, those are basic things you need, but what are like some of the basic um, hardware stuff that you need? Like do you need cameras, computers, uh, mixers? Like what do you need to get a basic stream going? I know a lot of churches will have a lot of different pieces of technical equipment, but what is just the basic three or four things that you need to go from your church um, to the internet so anybody who's not in your building can see. First, you have to have audio and video, so whether that is from the mic that you're using through your mixer board or into the camera if you have, depending on how your setup is, but you need the audio and the video. So starting with the audio, most churches already have, you already have a mic and you already have your board and everything set up like that. So we'll assume that audio is for the most part taken care of. We'll get into the details more with regards to how you run everything. You already have the mic, you already have the mixer board, and most already have a computer. If you don't have a computer, that's the next thing you'll have to get, is a decent computer. Not doesn't have to be high spec, but has to be able to run the programs. So as for the camera itself, or as for the, the visual itself, that's where you would need to, there's different options available, different price ranges, but you need a camera that, either camera or a camcorder, but the most important thing about that is that Again, this is more technical, but it needs to have a clean out signal, clean HDMI out signal, just so that there is no markings or anything on the screen, rather than if you look at just a regular camera, you'll see everything on there, like all around it, but you just need to have the, the clean signal out. Like no overlays, no yeah. text or anything, just a clean full, full screen. Yeah, just a clean screen like that. Um, so we'll go, we'll go visual first. So to get the camera signal out, you will need to have so a capture device. So from the camera, to, uh, there's a cord that connects to a small box or a small little USB. Um, that's what actually makes the computer think of the camera as a webcam, which every computer has. Um, that is what will go and trans or transform that signal into like a webcam signal. And then the camera and any program will recognize it. And then that's how the visual gets on there. So as for the audio side of things, um, that, the preferred method is going to be coming out of your board and the easiest and most basic way if you don't have a high class board or, even, or a middle of the road board is to just take it from your headphone out signal that you'll have to like monitor a lot more but at least that way it's a signal that will come out of there into your computer most boards these days whether analog or digital they'll be able to they'll have a 
um, an, a dedicated signal out. So, or like, well, without getting more technical, they have a dedicated signal out, which you can run into the computer via the, um, the adapter, the um, headphone jack that the computer has or the mic jack that the computer has. Um, you can get, again, more technical. You can use through the USB um, inputs. We here at REST, we just use the regular headphone because it was the simplest when we were just basically just trying to get some type of audio out for yeah. people. So there we go. We covered basic, the basic things that you need to get a live stream going. So again, you need audio, you need visuals, and um, which is you know video and you need some type of hardware to run that all through most cases there are other ways to do it easiest way to do it is through a computer um, so you gotta, you gotta get a camera you gotta get some type of mixer board or something obviously most churches already have um, a mixer board so you're using that to get your audio into the computer where you can then push it out through your live stream so we have those basic things, but then is it just that simple you have those or is there another program that you need in order to push it out to something like live to Facebook or to YouTube? So you could, if your computer is spec high enough, which is again, at least minimum middle of the road, you could just go directly into Facebook Live or YouTube Live and, um, and just stream it that way. However, um, as you'll see with other church or even or services, how we have different overlays, different slides that come on. Um, you will need to have a, a, a program on there to capture everything. So whether it's your projector, whether it's your, um, like any type of other videos you wanna play during service in order to get all that captured for the live stream, live stream broadcast. So you need a program, um, the most, the free one that everyone uses is gonna be OBS. Um, OBS Studio, that one has, has all the functionality you could want. It's just that the interface might be a little bit um, generic for some people, but it just, it works and it works, works well. Um, there are other ones that have more user-friendly interfaces like Wirecast and vMix, which like they all have the same general idea. Um, just their interface looks different. Like we use OBS here. Um, we were using Wirecast, um, but again, just had, there were some issues with tech and our computer and everything. So we just went back to OBS and OBS has been working fine. It's been very, um, Steady has been very, the stream has been very healthy, so we wouldn't have any issues. There are different platforms that you can, or different programs that you can use. Okay. Um, or again, on Mac, there are um, EasyCam, I believe is the one that. Yeah, Ecam. That, yeah, Ecam, yeah, sorry, that's the one that Mac uses. I'm a Windows person, sorry. I'm a Mac person. <laughs> so there are, I think VMix can work on Mac as well, but in any case, they all have their, like, you just have to have a program that can run everything and then it'll be fun. So if you're a church on a small budget or you're just getting started, OBS might be your best option because it is free. It will take some time to get used to it, to set it up, but OBS works well. Um, we use it here. I actually prefer OBS um, over Wirecast sometimes, only because we use two cameras and it's a lot easier to switch back between the two. But um, OBS might be your best friend if you're a church on a budget. So now you have your audio, you have your visuals, your video, and you have your computer, you have your hardware, your software program, um, which right now we're just gonna use OBS. You have your software program, OBS. Once you have all of that, then you now need somewhere to put it out um, so that people can actually see this video. Yeah. What are some of the more popular places that churches are using? So the most popular one is gonna be YouTube, just because it has the YouTube studio, which can allow you to um, monitor different things and check different things and just see that everything is as it should be. Um, Facebook, again, is the next one where, again, depending on, um, there's all, everything online you can see, like, um, depending on like your server and everything, you can actually stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. But again, most churches is either YouTube or Facebook. Um, there are other churches that will use um, the actual live stream program, which same thing, just a generic link that will be sent out and everyone can view. Um, but again, going with the least expensive and free is gonna be Facebook or YouTube. So that's pretty much how you get from your church building to allow people who are not in your building to see your live stream at some, with some type of um, good quality. So let's move on now to talk about actual some of the gear 
that we use. Um, so cameras and mixers and uh, mics. Well, mics pretty much people use what you have, but mostly people will have to go and buy a camera. Yeah. Um, that's mostly the main thing that churches don't normally have that you would need to get to get a live stream. So let's talk about some affordable cameras, some options for gear. Yeah, so again, just going through the very basic generic setup, well, actually what we were using before, um, then we started to upgrade little by little. So the you can start with, uh, again, different brands, but we use Canon, I use camera, I'm a Canon shooter. I, it is, that's just Canon what it shooter. Was. <laughs> Sony's good too, and Nikon is getting there, but Canon. Um, so as for camcorders, I know Sony does have some good cameras, but again, talking about affordability, you're gonna talk about the Canon Vixia series. That's the one that I would recommend for just starting out. So if you have a Canon Vixia, like a, um, is the RF and HF, um, either way they're going for, on the used market for about $200, um, just for the camcorder alone and the charger and everything. Um, that is your, that's like the lowest one I recommend. The quality of them, they're not gonna be amazing quality like a broadcast camera because it is a smaller camera, it is a, inexpensive. Just a run of the mill consumer camera like what people used to have for their um, home videos. So, but they will still work. It will still give you a feed so that people can see. So this is a basic, um, this is one of the camcorders I was recommending. The um, This is a HFR200. Again, just a regular run of the mill um, camcorder. However, um, as you'll see, there are there is a HDMI out signal. So what you will do is run this going directly into a cap the capture card. Um, what the capture card is, and I'll have one here as well. What this little device is, they have these ones which are connected by a USB and then they have others that are just a straight USB connection to the computer. Um, this is the Elgato HD60. Um, there's the HD60S and 4K versions as well. Um, this one, what this does is it will take the signal from the camcorder and through the a regular HDMI cord will go into this device. From this device connected to the computer by USB, that's what will tell the, that's what will trick the computer into thinking that it's a webcam or um, yeah, into some type of webcam or just another camera that's integrated with the computer. Um, because you can't connect the camcorder or any other camera. Well, you couldn't until recently connect something like this to the computer and it just worked. Um, so you need a capture card basically. Yeah, and right now I know on Amazon they have a few of them that are people are being surprised about now where it's, they're less than $40, but they're actually working. I actually ordered one before I came here, just test it out. Um, but we didn't get to test it out today for doing service. But um, yeah, like they, what basically what the capture card is again, this is what the streamers use online when they're streaming their video games. The same, same thing, except instead of streaming video games, we're just streaming it to YouTube for service. Okay, cool. All right, so if people have a little bit of budget and they're looking to, you know, get a little bit um, of a better quality with uh, their videos, what are some other options that people could use? Still on a budget, but they're ready to step up from a camcorder. So next step up, which will actually not use the capture card, would be, um, we're gonna stick with Canon because Canon has the program, um, is to use a Canon camera with the EOS utility software. Um, due to COVID-19 and everything that's been happening, they have allowed it so that their cameras can now connect directly into the computer, which before was never possible. Now it can connect directly into the computer and then the computer will use the actual software, like the Canon EOS utility software, to think that that's a webcam and allow you to use that signal as your streaming signal. So if you get a Canon camera, you can save on the cost of a... Of the capture card, the which capture, capture cards, card. sorry if I didn't mention, well, like I said, I know the Amazon one's $30, whereas the Elgato's, you're looking at at least another $150 if you're lucky to find it online use or above like $200, $250 for a new one. So what, can, uh, what camera are you recommending? I would recommend any camera that has the autofocus in video. So um, you're looking at like a Canon 70D, 80D, 
90D or um, 6D Mark II. Like there's different cameras. You can look up online to see what they are. Um, but it has to have autofocus and video. Reason being again is that you don't want to, well, you have it set and then if the person moves back and forth, then they'll be out of focus and you have to readjust. So that would be the main, um, that would be work I recommend as the minimum, the Canon 70, 80, 90. Other than that, if you, I mean, nowadays there are mirrorless cameras out there as well. So you have like the Canon, um, the M series, you have the Canon um, EOS RP, you have the Canon EOS R, you have the, um, the new ones that just came out, the R5s and, R, and R6 which are all, they all have that capability of the clean HDMI out in the camera as well. So you can use that with a capture card or with EOS Utility and it will work fine with the computer. Just as an FYI for people who are watching and who also you've seen any of our church uh, stream services, we use um, a couple of different Canon cameras. Um, when Vaughn is the main one here, you're using either... Your I'm using my, I'm using the old cameras, so despite what I just said about getting autofocus on the camera, I'm using ones that don't have it, but, so I'm using my Canon 6D and my Canon 60D. Um, those will be the main, the wide angle and the closer shot. And then when we're together or when you're here, then you're using your EOS R and your 7D, which have the video autofocus. So it's a lot easier just to turn and point and shoot and then it will record for you. All right, so I guess one of the things is when you moving up from a camcorder to a DSLR, you have to have extra money because now you also have to worry about lenses. Yeah, so with regards to the lenses, that will determine, that will be dependent on the size of your church or um, sanctuary, the distance from the camera to the um, person speaking or the pulpit area or the stage. Um, so you may want to have, if it's a closer distance, if it's not that far, you could get away with uh, um, something such as a 24 to 70 um, in the Tamron or Canon or the Canon 24 to 105, that could be okay in this, in our church because our distance is at, we're basically at the back of the church where um, compared to the pulpit, so we're using the 70 to 200 millimeter lenses. So those lenses again more expensive. Those are going to be in the um, at least thousand dollars depending on the age of the lens, but they will still be able to have that reach to the front of the front of the stage. So we're not really going to get too much into the actual mixer because at this point we're going to assume that if you, uh, most churches will have some type of mixer, yeah. you know, or you have your mics and all that type of stuff happening. Um, some churches may not have a computer. If you're going to buy a computer or a laptop, what are some of the basic settings that you need to ensure your computer has in order to run uh, all the software and everything that would need to um, go out for the live stream feed. So the good news is that now in 2020, the, the consumer computers that you can get at um, any computer store, Best Buy, Canada Computers or anything, wherever you are, um, they will be, like any middle of the world computer will be able to handle live streaming. Um, what you will need to get, uh, my settings that I would recommend for the at least would be Again, going, assuming you're going to get a new computer somewhere, um, but it would be at very least, and um, again, Windows, I know Windows, um, that's this one. Um, you're going to be getting uh, at least an i5 processor, Intel Pentium i5. Um, I don't know what the AMD equivalent is, but AMD is another processor as well. But an Intel i5 processor, um, one of the newer ones, at, at least a seventh generation series, although we're running a third generation series, I think, on ORs, but um, everything we have is donated, so we're thankful for that. So um, at least a, a seventh generation um, a processor, um, you'll need to have, it needs to have the, it'll have all the ports, but again, just make sure it has the USB ports, the USB, USB 2 or USB 3 ports. Um, and again, for the basic setup, like or setup, you will need to, it'll need to have a mic input. So if you have a, uh, desktop computer, then they all come with a mic, a mic input and a headphone out. Um, if you're using a laptop, which laptops I wouldn't really suggest unless it's a very powerful one because they um, they aren't again depending on what it is they aren't they don't have as much power and upgradeability as a lab as a as a traditional desktop. Um, assuming again you're at a church where it's not going to be moved anyway, so 
desktop should be fine for the most part. And any type of like RAM or anything like that, SSD, like anything else that you would um, suggest that you would have internally for your desktop? Yes, yeah, so you'll, with anything that's uh, in the seventh gen um, of, or is now the 10th gen, but anything that you'll get now, um, I recommend at least eight gigabytes of RAM. That's, I would recommend the bare minimum, just because the programs that you'll be running and having the, um, the web browser open which open which will take a lot of ram itself right there um, but at the very least eight gigs i would recommend if it's not that much expensive more expensive is to get 16 gigs of ram that's a good sweet spot for any type of multitasking that you can do on the computer so you can as we do here you can have the stream running through um, the computer you can also be running your projector easy worship or pro presenter you can um, um, be running OBS as well on it as well, so you can have multiple windows open and still be able. To, the computer won't be able to, won't have any throttling. Um, if you can get one that has a, again, this is going to be more technical. If you get one can, that has a video card on it as well, rather than the integrated video, then that will aid in having the computer just disperse um, tasks rather than having to run everything through the processor itself. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, so let's move on <clears throat> a little bit more to what um, we use specifically here at REST. If you've seen our services, then you're, you may be wondering what we use. So what we use here at REST, we have our two cameras set up. So the Canon 60 is the main camera. Um, that is our wide angle. That's just on the um, stage in the pulpit area um, that encompasses everything. And then as our close-up camera, we will use the either the Canon 70, 70D or the EOS R just because that those ones have the the full-time autofocus. So before we use two capture cards, the uh, both the Elgados, so the HD60 and HD60S. Now we have switched because of Canon with the EOS utility and how well that works. We're using that in conjunction with the HD60S um, capture card. So we will use the main camera, which will be like your Canon six, uh, like my Canon 60 or the just the static shot that will be used on the capture card. And then EOS Utility, we will use that with the um, EOS R, the one that will be close focus. We might use the opposite wave in case, just because of, they both work interchangeably, they both work fine, because they're all Canon cameras anyway, so they will work whichever way. We went into a little bit earlier, but um, the programs that we use um, for we use OBS, um, sometimes we use Wirecast, but mostly we've been using OBS, and we also use Easy Worship, right? Yeah, so we use, Easy Worship is the program that we use to shows everything to our congregation. So um, whether it's song lyrics or posters or anything that we want to present, we will use that, any message that we want to present or put out there for everyone online or, um, on the, uh, or in in-house we'll use that. So what we do is that with OBS, um, Wirecast 2 has a, a plugin as well. What that will do is that we can actually take the feed that Easy Worship has and while the congregation is looking at it in-house where you can see it online. We're not going to go too much in depth of how we wire our mixer into everything but we have a separate feed just for the broadcast where it sounds different than what people in-house can hear, correct? Yes, so the, again, if you have a very basic setup, then you're gonna have to be using the same feed. However, any type of, um, even analog boards can do it now, but, or they could do it before, or any type of um, digital board can do it easily. So what it is is that you'll want to use, um, basically, you're mixing your sound for that, just for that feed, just for that broadcast mix. Um, that way you can make changes to the broadcast mix. Let's say you don't want to hear as much organ, but you want to hear it in the actual, um, in the house more. So you can actually adjust that in the broadcast mix so that it will be able to, it'll come through. Same thing with vocals. Let's say um, you want to adjust someone's vocals. Um, they sound great in the house, but in the feed they're too loud or too soft. You can adjust that without affecting in-house. And what mixer do we use? What board? We're using the um, Behringer X32. Um, that's the, that's a, 
pretty standard board now for churches. Um, they're not crazy expensive like how they used to be. Digital boards used to be thousands upon thousands of dollars. Now they're in the like low thousand range or a couple thousand dollar range. Um, again, for a church starting out, that's still, that might be a lot of money, but it's still there. Uh, just also a side note here, both Vaughn and myself, we are actually both uh, professional photographers. That's why we uh, our, our gear that we talk about is our, is our cameras that we obviously use for our church. Um, but yeah, so because we're both photographers, we have all this gear. So not every church is going to have all the cameras that we have. Don't take it as anything. We This is what we do also. So that's why we have more cameras than the average person. Yeah, we'll just um, repurpose them for... Yeah, <laughs> for, for a church. Which is, you know, God, God be the glory that we have them, that we're able to use it for our church. But uh, last thing before we go into, so just also because with our feed, I know everything is run through the board, but um, obviously the singers are using mics, but what about um, the instruments? How are we able to hear the instruments in the feed along with the singers? So everything is, every, all of our instruments are mic'd up in one way, shape, or form. So whether it's the drums, all the drum, like the drum heads and the cymbals are all mic'd. Um, the bass guitar, although it's going, like I said, most churches already have it into the house. It's just that signal coming into the board as well. You just take that feed as well. Um, keyboard, same thing. Anything that will go through the house, if it can be going into the house, then it will come to the board. And from the board, we can just take it and put it into our broadcast stream. Um, for us here at REST, we just have the drums that are using mics and the organ that uses the mic because it's a um, um, traditional organ. Um, but there's the keyboard, the bass guitar, and the other guitars if someone else comes in to play, we all have that directly into, this, into the um, into our board and then we can just use that. So if you currently don't have any of your instruments going through your board, what is a real quick thing that you need to do? Obviously you talked about the drums and the organ being mic'd, but for the bass and for the keyboard, what is something that you would need to get? Just real quick, talk about that real quick, what you need to get in order to get it into the house and also into your board for your broadcast. So to get that into the house, you will need to have, um, well, I'll, I'll talk about our setup here. So we have our um, digital snake or a snake, which is what this has all of our inputs. So basically you can put that directly into the snake and it'll come directly into the board. Um, if you have a older analog board, then you may need to have a, what's called a DI box. What that will do is that will, just like a capture card for the camera actually, it will take the signal that that instrument is playing and then, or that is producing, and then turn it into a digital signal so that it can be run through the house. All right, so I hope we um, covered everything that you would need to get your church up and running for live stream, whether you're already going. At this point, I'm sh most churches are already live streaming at some, some sort because of the pandemic. I know a lot, some churches were, smaller churches were just using Zoom, but if you're looking to go forward and using live stream for YouTube or Facebook or anything like that, I hope that we've helped you to be able to do that. Please do leave us any questions, any comments, and we'll try to get to answering those for you. Also, be sure to give this video a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel. You'll see all of our weekly Sunday services and anything else that we have going up um, video-wise. If there's a video that you would like for us to cover, um, please do let us know in the comments and we'll be sure to try and get that going for you guys. Uh, thank you again here from Rest Tabernacle. Thank you, Vaughn, our head of our media ministry. He not only does the visual and the audio, but he's making sure that everything is going great with the sound, with the band, with the music, with our singers, um, all the connections, everything that's running through this church. That's all him. So he does a great job. So thank you again uh, for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.